Um, but I took inspiration from one of my favorite hymns, The, the Springs of Living Water. So uh, I'll, get you to, um, I'll get you to turn to John chapter 4. Um, that's where we'll, we'll be taking most of the scripture this, uh, this evening. But um, I'll read to you the lyrics for the hymn. It says, I thirsted in the barren land of sin and shame, and nothing satisfying there I found. But to the blessed cross of Christ one day I came, where springs of living water did abound. How sweet the living water from the hills of God, it makes me glad and happy all the way. Now glory, grace, and blessing mark the path of trod. I'm shouting hallelujah every day. O sinner, won't you come to Calvary? A fountain there is flowing deep and wide. The Savior now invites you to the water free, where thirsting spirits can be satisfied. And the chorus is, drinking at the springs of living water. Happy now am I, my soul they satisfy. Drinking at the springs of living water, a wonderful and bountiful supply. So I think that's a beautiful hymn. And so that just inspired me to write this sermon. But in John chapter 4, we have the, the story of the woman at Jacob's well. Um, so in verse 5, it starts off, Then cometh he to a city of Samaria, which is called Sychar, near the parcel of ground that Jacob gave to his son Joseph. Now Joseph's well, Jacob's well was there. Jesus, therefore, being wearied with his journey, sat thus on the well, and it was about the sixth hour. There cometh a woman to, of Samaria to draw water, and Jesus saith unto her, Give me to drink, for his disciples were gone away unto the city to buy me. Then said the woman of Samaria unto him, How is it that thou, being a Jew, askest drink of me, which am a woman of Samaria? For the Jews have no dealings with the Samaritans. And Jesus answered and said unto her, If thou knewest the gift of God, and who it is that saith to thee, Give me to drink, thou wouldest have asked of him, and he would have given thee living water. So right away, Jesus here, he sees a Samaritan woman, obviously from the northern kingdom, um, and he wastes no time with an object lesson on salvation. You know, so the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. You know, in Ephesians, for, for by grace you are saved through faith, and that not of yourselves, it is the gift of God. So he's saying that if you knew who you were speaking to, you would have asked for this gift of living water. You know, so he's also showing there's no difference between to God, between being a Samaritan, being a Jew, or being a Gentile. You know, she's the one who brought up that she was a Samaritan. Um, but, God, you know, Christ still offered the same gift to her as well, being a Samaritan. So in verse 11, it says, The woman saith unto him, Sir, thou hast nothing to draw with, and the well is deep, from whence then hast thou that living water? Art thou greater than our father Jacob, which gave us the well, and drank thereof himself, and his children, and his cattle? And Jesus answered and said unto her, Whosoever drinketh of, of this water shall thirst again. But whosoever, whosoever drinketh of the water that I shall give him shall never thirst. But the water that I shall give him shall be in him a well of water springing up into everlasting life. And the woman said unto him, Sir, give me this water that I thirst not, neither come hither to draw. So at this point, she still didn't get it. You know, Jesus is he's explaining a metaphorical nature. Um, that he's offering in regard to the fountain of living water. We know that, of course, is the new man, the Holy Ghost. That's the salvation we receive the moment that we believe. But she's thinking carnally, and she wants to take this water so she never has to come back and draw it again for herself. You know, and I, I liken that to maybe she's thinking of the miracle of Elijah and the oil that never ran out uh, with the, the widow woman and her son. Um, but in verse 16, Jesus said unto her, Go, call thy husband and come hither. The woman answered and said, I have no husband. Jesus said unto her, Thou hast well said, I have no husband. For thou hast had five husbands, and he whom thou now hast is not thy husband. In that saidst thou truly. And the woman said unto him, Sir, I perceive that thou art a prophet. Thy fathers worshipped in this mountain, and ye say that in Jerusalem is the place where men ought to worship. And Jesus said unto her, Woman, believe me, the hour cometh, and when ye shall neither in this mountain nor yet at Jerusalem worship the Father. Ye worship, ye know not what. We know what we worship, for salvation is of the Jews. But the hour cometh, and now is, when the true worshippers shall worship the Father in spirit and in truth. For the Father seeketh such to worship him. God is the Spirit, and they that worship him must worship him in spirit and in truth. So we see two things here. Firstly, it's that he's not going to be worshipped in Jerusalem. You know, it's, he's talking about us, like our local churches now. We worship the Lord here, you know, and that's what he's speaking about. 
Um, but also, you know, I've, I just want to explain as well what it says in, in verse 22. Because I've heard it many times incorrectly stated that salvation came for the Jews. Um, but that's the opposite of, of the meaning of that verse. If you read it again, it says salvation is of the Jews. So what does this mean? What it means is that salvation came by the Jews. You know, so they were the possessors of the prophets and the words and the oracles of God. You know, so their purpose was to provoke us, the Gentiles, to believe on the Lord. Romans 2.28 says, For he's not a Jew, which is one outwardly. Neither is that circumcision which is outward in the flesh. But he's a Jew, which is one inwardly. And circumcision is that of the heart, in the spirit, and not in the letter, whose praise is not of men, but of God. In chapter 3, what advantage then hath the Jew, or what profit is there of circumcision? Much every way, chiefly, because under them were committed the oracles of God. In Hebrews 4, 6, it says, Seeing therefore it remained that some must enter therein, and to whom it was first preached, entered not in because of unbelief. So their job as the children of God was to provoke the Gentiles to jealousy, to believe on the Lord. You know, and sadly, the only thing they seemed to be able to provoke was the wrath of God. And Paul says in Romans chapter 11, uh, verse 11, says, I say then, have they stumbled that they should fall? God forbid, but rather through their fall, salvation is coming to the Gentiles for to provoke them to jealousy. So now it's the Gentiles' job to provoke all to jealousy, including the Jews. You know, so though, even those, so the ones, you know, the ones who call themselves Jews and are not, um, you know, they still need to be provoked, just like they provoke, were to provoke us. Uh, in verse 12, now if, if the fall of them be the riches of the world and the diminishing of them the riches of the Gentiles, how much more the fullness? For I speak to you Gentiles inasmuch as I am the apostle of the Gentiles, I magnify mine office. If by any means I may provoke to emulation them which are my flesh and might save some of them. So again, what's he speaking of here? You know, he's speaking of being, being an example to the Jews and... and um, trying to make them jealous so they'll believe on the Lord as well, just like Paul did. But also it goes into a replacement theology. You know, so it was taken from the nation of Israel and given to a nation of believers of both Jews and Gentiles. So the Lord says in Matthew 21, 42, Jesus said unto them, Did you never read in the Scriptures the stone which the builders rejected? The same is become the head of the corner. This is the Lord's doing, and it's marvelous in our eyes. Therefore I say unto you, the kingdom of God shall be taken from you and given to a nation, bringing forth the fruits thereof. In Mark chapter 11, you know, we see Jesus perform a miracle here with a fig tree. In Mark 11 verse 12, it says, And on the morrow when they were come from Bethany, he was hungry. And seeing a fig tree afar off having leaves, he came, if haply he might find anything thereon. And when he came to it, he found nothing but leaves. For the time of figs was not yet. And Jesus answered and said unto it, No man eat fruit of thee hereafter forever. And his disciples heard it. And this is a, sort of, again, an object lesson to the disciples about replacement theology, what we would call that, the replacement of the nation of Israel. Go down to verse uh, 20 in Mark 11. It says, And in the morning as they passed by, they saw the fig tree dried up from the roots. And Peter, calling to remember it, said unto him, Master, behold, the fig tree which thou cursest is withered away. And Jesus answering said unto him, Have faith in God. For I verily say unto you that whosoever shall say to this mountain, Be thou removed, and be thou cast into the sea, and shall not doubt in his heart, and shall believe those things which he saith shall come to pass, he shall have whatsoever he saith. Therefore I say unto you, What things soever ye desire when ye pray, believe that ye receive them, and ye shall have them. And when ye stand praying, forgive. If ye have ought against any, that your Father, also which is in heaven, may forgive you your trespasses. But if you do not forgive, neither will your Father, which is in heaven, forgive your trespasses. So again, what's the lesson we get from the story? In what way did Israel fail? You know, they failed to produce fruit. They entered not in because of unbelief. But they did not provoke the Gentiles, you know, to enter into God's rest either. In fact, they prevented them, if you read through the book of Acts. So the kingdom was taken from them, and it was given to a nation doing what? bringing forth the fruits thereof. So that's the emphasis here. You know, so we'll conclude in John chapter 4, verse 25. It says, The woman saith unto him, I know that Messiah has come, 
which is called Christ. When he is come, he will tell us all things. And Jesus said unto her, I that speak unto thee am he. So at this point, we see the woman believes. You know, and we see an immediate reaction from her. It says, Then the woman then left the water pot and went her way into the city and said to the men, Come see a man which told me all things that ever I did. Is not this the Christ? They went out of the city and came unto him. So you notice how she left the water pot behind. You know, she understood the true meaning of the fountain of living water. You know, so we see her first action was to return to the city and preach to the men there the gospel of Jesus Christ. You know, so what are we commanded to do? We're to take that spring of living water, which we receive freely, and to share it with others in the same manner. You know, so we do that by preaching the gospel. Um, you know, and, and that's, to, that's what it means to produce fruit after your own kind. It says the fruit of the righteous is the tree of life, and he that winneth souls is wise. So I'll just read you from 1 Corinthians 10, verse 1. It says, Moreover, brethren, I would not, I would not that ye should be ignorant, how that all our fathers were under the cloud, and all passed through the sea. We were all baptized under Moses in the cloud and in the sea, and did all eat the same spiritual meat, and did all drink the same spiritual drink. For they drank that spiritual rock that followed them, and that rock was Christ. So again, they had no excuse. They met the Christ in the Old Testament. They drank of that same spiritual drink that we drink of when we believe on the Lord. So if you're saved and you've partaken of that spiritual drink, then we're commanded to make it available to whosoever wants to drink of that as well. You know, so we don't hide that from them. You know, we don't keep it to ourselves. And that was the folly of Israel. You know, so if the gospel will be hid, it's hid to them that are lost. So we're here to find the lost sheep, not only of the house of Israel, but also of the whole world. So let's pray.